Welcome to another episode of AGP Quickies, where I can barely pronounce the acronym. Today, we got Max uh, with us, and he has many a thoughts about The Mandalorian. Uh, we are going to go over the last two episodes because we missed you guys last week. We hope that you missed us, too. Anyway, Max, let's hear it. Start with episode three. What do you think? Yeah, man. Um, so I rewatched it. So I'm going to give you my initial thoughts and then tell you how they revised on a second watch. Okay. My first watch, I thought that was the the worst Star Wars I'd ever seen in my life. Um, I think part of that was because I stayed up late to watch it and I wanted to watch a Mandalorian episode. You know, that second episode was so, so good. And so I'm looking forward to seeing Bo-Katan and Mando and, and their, you know, escape from the Mythosaur and, and all this. I wanted to see another episode about them. And it started off so strong, right? You have them getting attacked by the TIE fighters. Uh, who knows who that is? I mean, we could speculate about that, but started off really good. And then all of a sudden it switches over to Dr. Pershing. And I'm like, wait, what is this? And then like the effects looked bad in my opinion, the whole glowy popsicle thing was ridiculous. And I just <laughs> thought the episode was a bore fest. You know, my name is the Mando Lorian today because upon a second watch, what I started to enjoy was that what this episode does is it dives into Star Wars lore a bit deeper than we've seen in the past. I still have some pretty strong issues with it, but I do appreciate the world building. And I'm sure it's also going to tie into this season of The Mandalorian more, but. They're trying to build something, and I think what they're trying to illustrate from episode three is how the First Order came to be, or at least the beginnings of that. Um, and I don't mind that so much, but what I don't like still upon Yeah, take off the kid gloves, Max. Tell us what you really think. <laughs> oh, I do not like how they freaking treat the New Republic. The, the heroes of the original trilogy that we've grown to love spent three movies defeating the Empire... And now five years later, the New Republic is just an empire with smiles on their faces. You know, like they're doing shock therapy. They've got these soldiers in the amnesty program that have numbers. That's where the, the, the First Order tie-in is kind of for me. I feel like that's the beginnings of that. Like this amnesty program is just... Gonna... Well, the clones had that too, though, right? I mean... They did. And, and while I didn't love that, I could understand it a bit more because they were literal clones. But which I, I know shouldn't make them less, but they are clones and they were yeah. manufactured. And Palpatine had a hand in that. So. And Palpatine had a, had a hand in that too, which is why I always liked that the clones gave themselves names and whatnot. But in this amnesty program, they're not supposed to use their names, it seems. Everyone's just going by their numbers. And I that really bothered me from this new government that's supposed to be full of good guys. And they're just, you know, numbers. Uh, and then you add to that that they're, they have valid resources from the Empire that they're just throwing away. I just really hated what I saw from the New Republic. So um, while I, I liked it a little bit more on a second watch, I still walked away from that episode saying this is bad. I just I, I didn't like it. Yeah. So so I know that you've seen some of my uh, takes on Facebook. <laughs> so you know that I have some similar opinions to you. So... I, I agree. Um, I like the parts with Din and Bo. But, um, yeah, there, there's a real problem. The, I can say that the only thing that I've seen that they've shown that's good from the, you know, from the Republic replacing the Empire um, is the Asian, uh, you know, X-Wing fighter guy that helped out Din in Season 2. Oh, uh, yeah, Mr. Like Kim. Kim from Kim's Convenience, right? That guy's cool. But that's it. Right? Like one dude. And uh, we haven't seen anything else where anybody is good. And uh, it's, it's, it's like you said, the, the original trilogy, like that's what it was about. Like a new hope, right? What were they hoping for? Like they, they defeated the empire. What, what were they hoping to get out of that? Not this. It wasn't this. So like, and then you have, if you take the whole, you know, prequel trilogy and put that in there, it's like, you know, that story is compelling because there was all this fighting and it was all just manipulation by the emperor, right? So you have yeah. this devastating after effect where people realize, oh, shoot, this whole war didn't mean anything. 
And then now we're getting to the point where it, previously in Star Wars, it was this big celebration like, yay, the rebels beat the Empire. But now it's just like all over again. Like, oh, that was for nothing all over again because it sucks anyway. Like, so, and they're, they're just not showing us anything. And like, I try and like give them the benefit of the doubt, like, hey, it's a big galaxy. Um, you know, and we've only seen a little bit of it, but they keep consistently showing us that the Republic that they've built is really, really sucky. And to me, it's giving this nihilistic view of this story that should be a story about hope, right? Like that's the whole point. Like the entire, like like the first movie was a new hope, (laughs) like, the rebellions are built on hope. Like that's supposed to be what the story is about. And then it just fizzles to, to nothing each time. All of our heroes, everything they've done is worth nothing. And so that just makes me think seven, eight, and nine, even then where, you know, those were not the best of the star Wars. Right. But like, did that mean anything? Like what, what do they do after that? Cause I feel like it's just going to suck. And, and, you know, even Luke became this, crappy hermit you know guy you know like everything just sucks they just make everything suck why are they doing that (laughs) you know um it's kind of yeah it's it's pissing me off it's disappointing yeah yeah it really is and and it's really frustrating to see all this so like i i've read a lot of star wars books and i've read quite a bit that occurred after the um uh the original return of the jedi in fact most of the books I've read start about five years after the new Republic has been formed. So it's like this same timeline, but in the legends era. And it seems like they're, they're trying to do some of what was there uh, with the whole Thrawn thing and the cloning like that definitely was existing. They, they did um, force cloning during that time period and Thrawn was the big threat. So I, it seems like they are, going to be doing a bit of that obviously their own new take in this new canon or the real i guess the real canon if you want to call it that but my issue is the new republic wasn't garbage back then um mon mothma was running it and leia was one of the senators and then leia eventually takes over and now she's she's the um the the chancellor and both of them did a really good job of running the government now there was corruption behind the scenes there was infighting among the the politicians that's fine. That's normal politics, unfortunately. But the 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 people were treated well. And for the most part, people liked being part of the New Republic. There was still like in the outer regions, people that didn't want to be a part of it, just like we're seeing here. That like that's fine, but I am I'm just not liking what I'm seeing of the New Republic. It's very, very frustrating for me as a Star Wars fan. So first 10 minutes were awesome. 30 minutes of mostly trash. And then the last five minutes were good too. Okay. We're going to, we're going to move on to episode four. My last thought on episode three is that they need to start showing some good things coming from the new Republic. I don't even know if that's the official name, but that's, they need to do that real quick because what they're doing right now sucks. Anyway, let's move on to episode four. Pretty sure they're called the New Republic. They've alluded, they've said that in the Mandalorian. I mean, it makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. But um, anyway, let's move on to episode four. We're still quickies, right? But we're doing extra long quickies because we missed you last yep. week. So um, let's move on to episode four. So, Max, start us off again. Episode four. Yeah, this Go. one I have a lot, a lot nicer things to say all around. Um, I loved it. I. It wasn't my favorite episode of the season, but you know, episode two was my favorite by by quite a bit. This was my second favorite episode that's come out so far this season. I loved what we saw. It was short, um, but it was short and sweet. Um, I I liked the storyline of um, you know the the uh, the young Mandalorian kid being uh, abducted by the pterodactyl or whatever you want to call it. But as cool as that was, like, that was nice to see Bo-Katan kind of integrating herself into this group. Um, but honestly, the, the big highlight for me was Grogu's background and getting to see him rescued from Order 66. I know there's been a lot of speculation out there, people wanting him to be rescued by, you know, any number of 
popular Jedi. Uh, you know, I've seen Mace Windu's name thrown around. Oh, he, he isn't dead. He's he's going to save Grogu or Ahsoka or whoever, uh, which Ahsoka would make sense because she was preoccupied during Order 66. But I've seen a lot of people's names thrown around, and I liked that it was just a Jedi that we had never seen before. But did you notice yeah, who the actor was, cool. was? That's Jar Jar Binks. No. Yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't. I had no idea. His yeah, character that's... is so much better than Jar Jar. I hate oh, Jar absolutely. So he was great. <laughs> he was great. But I, I didn't realize that at first. And then I then I saw someone talking about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. That's, uh, I think it's Ahmed Best. Or I, I'm probably getting his name wrong there. But the, yeah, the guy who voiced Jar Jar Binks and played him in person, of course, they CGI'd him out. But um, that's Jar Jar. So it was kind of, I think Fun that's facts great. on AGP he was, quickies, guys. Yeah, he was bullied like crazy back in like, 2000 or which whatever, is so you know? dumb it's like yeah. dude okay george lucas wrote that character guys <laughs> so. if you want to get mad at someone get mad at george not the actor who portrayed what george wanted him to do right um and as much as i dislike jar jar never going to be advocating for bullying somebody you know back before yeah. twitter even existed like this guy like it really put him into a depression so i was happy to see him back in star wars i loved that scene i've watched the episode twice already just just fantastic it was the great the force is obviously with him now so oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i okay here's my thing and we talked we talked about this before max with um with obi-wan okay uh another huge miss why are we not seeing anakin at the temple right like he should be at the temple with the freaking stormtroopers killing people with the clone troopers right where, why is he not there? Why, like, and then, and then, you know, we have these Jedi that are protecting the younglings, and they're getting whooped. They're getting their butts kicked by like a couple of clone troopers. Like, why are they not wrecking like more of them? You know? Yeah, I honestly, it's a good question, but it was the same in Episode Three. I'm going to push back on you a little bit there because like episode three, when they show the montage of all the Jedi being killed, they get taken out pretty quick. Yeah. But there's like a ton of them at least yeah. like, like there was, there was uh, at the temple, there's four clone troopers and two Jedi and they're like, Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> like I'm yeah. like, come on now. It was probably for Give the sake break. of time, but I, I get where you're coming from because like I just replayed Jedi fallen order for the third time now getting ready for Jedi survivor. And they show order 66 in that game. And Cal Kestis, his master, is wrecking. He's got like a whole spaceship full of troopers after him, and he like takes almost all of them down. So I, I get what you mean. It would have been nice to see more yeah. of a Jedi master. Well, and or or BA Vader, you know? Somebody I mean that would have been cool. It, that should have been an Obi-Wan. I'll agree. I don't I didn't even think about that for today's episode. I don't I wouldn't have expected that. Would have been cool. But he should have been an Obi-Wan. I agree. I'm yeah. kind of I mean he was right he could but, he could have been in either one and it would have been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 some people have an issue with like seeing him kill the younglings. It's like he could have been killing those older ones. That's could that's older, saw killing the Jedi. This. Yeah. Yeah. That that would have been cool because they could have like filmed that ahead of time, knowing they were gonna do this scene in Mandalorian and just kind of yeah, cut it in. Honestly, Huge that miss. Would, that actually Huge would miss. be really cool. If they're going to go back to Order 66, I want to see Anakin like take on two Jedi at the same time and take them out. We've never seen him really being awesome, right? Like there was a little bit of it in Obi-Wan, but even then he gets beat by Obi-Wan. Rogue, Rogue like, One obviously is a highlight. Yeah, but he doesn't take on any Jedi. Yeah. Like I want to see him hunting down Jedi. Like that's supposed to be why he became super scary. Like, and we've seen zero of it ever. He, you see it in Jedi Fallen Order. You do see it there. But and, yeah, I, well, but he doesn't though. He doesn't. He, he like all they do is run away and he doesn't catch anybody. I know, but it's oh, still pretty terrifying. I mean, yeah, it's a cool scene, but it's like he, all all we ever see him do is fail. You know, even in no, Rebels. I get it. He, I get it. You go back to, it's not canon anymore, but the Force Unleashed, the first game, you start as Vader, and your mission is to go kill a Jedi. It's cool! Like, yeah. Like, yeah, I agree with you. It would be nice to see some Let's that. see Vader being awesome for once. Like, come on. Anyway, so, the other the other thing that I had, because Max is all, uh, he's always um, 
he's always our our guy full of uh, butterflies and rainbows, right? So I gotta <laughs> I gotta bring in the the negativity a little bit, but uh, I I like the episode overall as well. I liked the action, you know. I liked I liked the effects, um, you know. Like I liked all the main stuff about it, right? The the another issue that I had though was, um, basically I felt like the story was just a little aimless. Like the only protagonist that really had a goal in it that seems like maybe a little nefarious even is Bo Katan, right? And so, like, I'm like, this show is the Mandalorian, like, and we know the Mandalorian is supposed to be Din. It's not supposed to be Bo-Katan, right? Like, so I don't want them to be, you know, making Din, like, I want Bo-Katan to be a big character, but I don't want Din Djarin to be taking a backseat. I want him to be the main character. I want him to be the driving force of what's pushing the plot forward. Um, and Bo-Katan can be there and be you know, along the way and become a big character like she is. Uh, but yeah, I don't want her taking over. The no, show. I, I agree there. So I am, I am hoping that by next episode, the story moves along a little bit more because so far, like the, the, the first two episodes, it moved pretty quick. You know, he wanted to go yeah. on this mission to cleanse himself. He did that. Now he's cleansed. He's redeemed. Okay. Now where's the story going? Because for the last two episodes, it really hasn't, moved a lot they're setting right. things up obviously and that's fine but with eight episode seasons we're now halfway through what's coming up like where are we going from here or are you going to give me i don't know that i want to call this a filler episode but you could maybe use that terminology are you going to give me another two filler episodes and then the last two episodes are going to be really exciting and pull things along i hope not you know but with short seasons season like two, this they're... Season two Sorry. was pretty well paced other than the frog episode season yeah. two had, you know, pretty much every episode was pushing the story along. And I appreciated that, you know, obviously you had Boba Fett involved and it's like this season now it's like Bo-Katan's the Boba Fett of this season, I guess. But anyway, what were you saying? Um, I don't remember, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like they, they do seem like they're setting up to something. Um, and they, I, they just need to capitalize on it quick. Oh, I know what I was saying with short seasons like this, there shouldn't be filler episodes like that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, especially with how short the episodes themselves are like, there should be no fillers. Um, that was a big part of why I got annoyed last week. I saw a 59 minute runtime for episode three. I'm like, yes, no, it was not even a Mandalorian episode. 39 minutes of it was glowing popsicles. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so they need to capitalize on that quick. Um, that being said, this is AGP quickies guys. We are done for today and we want to say smash the like button, share the show with your friends. Also shameless plug. I am wearing a triple D dodgeball uh, hat. <laughs> Go check us out on Instagram, Triple D Dodgeball. We are going to Italy this year to uh, play in the tournament. So check us out. Um, but beyond that, never underestimate the value of a quickie.